Coming to you live and uncensored. This is the Hype Podcast. I'm oh so fresh with my co-host, yet to be named. That's me. We talk about everything from new gadgets, gizmos, politics, movies, and music. And our very own personal stories, because you know a motherfucker has to keep it real. I mean, it's just a, <laughs> right. uh, it's just a couple things I have to mention. Um, I learned today. Today I learned that bacon expires. Because uh, it's been a couple weeks since I wanted a piece of bacon. And I opened up a package and I went in there and it was kind of slimy. I was like, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and delete this conversation from my database because you don't fucking talk about bacon that way. Uh, it hurt me. I had to throw away bacon. <laughs> I mean, it was... I've ne- never in the history of ever have I uh, had anyone ever say that to me. I had to throw away bacon. No, nah, I had to throw that shit away. I mean, it just didn't look right. I sniffed it. It smelled all right, but then I called my cousin Junior. He's like, nah, you don't want to fuck around, Cuddy. He's like, that's pork. <laughs> <laughs> you never know I'll be growing up in that motherfucker. That's true. You, dude, you know what else didn't didn't really look right last night? Did you see that Conor McGregor fight? I did not see the fight. I heard uh, that he uh, he took an L. Dude, more than an Dude, he had to fucking... They knocked on his door. He had to open up and sign for that motherfucking L, dude. He got his ass whooped. I uh, submission, huh? Yeah, yeah, dude. Not not only that, like he just got outworked. Like the dude punched him in the face and like harder than it, I, I think Conor McGregor's ever been punched ever. I was gonna say getting punched in the face. I think that's kind of part. That's kind of part of how it works. Yeah, that's, that's part of the job description. I get I mean, it. But you know, I, he was playing football and got tackled. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah. Playing basketball and got fouled. Really? So, so wow, how did it, so how did, I mean, because I mean, what do they go? Five rounds? For the championship rounds, yeah. And how many rounds did they go? Uh, they, I think they, they went all the way to, let's see. No, I think they went to decision. Or no, fifth round, and he got checked. He got uh, choked out, like in the middle of the fifth round. I think fifth or fourth, something like that. I mean, that's the most humiliating part about UFC is like you get choked the fuck out. I mean, it's one thing if a guy catches you with some good shots and just lays you down. All right, you yeah. know. I mean, it's really. I mean, just like it's more personal to stab somebody than it is to shoot them. I mean, choking right. somebody right. out is fucking personal. Like, I'm all up in you. I had I, I wasn't even this close to my wife this week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> body on body, I am taking the life out of you. That's that's hey, that's that's a dedicated effort. I don't, dude. You remember you remember that scene from Saving Private Ryan? No, I didn't see Saving Private Ryan. That's another movie you can give me another loser thing on. Jesus Christ, you need to step your movie game up, dude, for real. There, there's a very dramatic scene at the at the end of Saving Private Ryan where this dude is in the middle of a knife fight and he's fighting a Nazi. And it's like a no-holds-barred, fucking very raw scene. I mean, they're they're biting each other's hands, like taking chunks out of fucking their, each other's hands to try and get this bayonet away from each other. Hey, just don't and, fuck up my face. I got to go home to my wife. <laughs> right, right? And so, so this German rolls over and he's got the knife and using gravity and literally just leans his body weight on this dude and starts fucking whispering to him like he's like shh just just go to sleep just go to sleep and the fucking dude is trying to negotiate with him he's like we could just we could just talk about this and like as he's getting stabbed it's just it's brutal dude that's what it was last night like that slow intimate like i'm surprised he wasn't whispering in his ear like where are you going to eat after this Nah, he was probably like, "Yeah, you you better go make me a sandwich after this, bitch." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after, after you recover from getting choked the fuck out, I needed you to get your ass up and go make me a fucking sandwich, and don't fuck See, around no, with them, and don't fuck around, be stingy with the mail. Shit, I just laid you out. <laughs> that's one of the other things I don't get too. Is like, why, why in that situation, unless unless you're only about the money, would people tap out? Like motherfucker, put me to sleep. Like go out, go out like a boss. Don't go out like a pussy. Like oh, oh, let me let me fucking tap out real quick. You know what? I feel like this because I, I I'm sure you've done your fair share of MMA because you've done everything. Fucking Harrison Ford, Raider of the Lost, art forms. But I'm sure <laughs> there's a the certain. I'm sure there's a, a 
a breaking point where you're like, this this shit really hurts. I'm really getting choked the fuck out. I really, I mean, how often do you get choked the fuck out? No, no that's very true. But when you're paid, <laughs> like, like I, he is limiting the the air going into my body. I am like, I'm really stressed out right now. You know when you have to go out. You know when you're having a bad day at work and you gotta go outside and take a break. That's a bad day at work. Hey man, I mean that's you, you, instead of having a, taking a mental day off, you're taking a mental fucking moment. Like I need to save my life because there's no guarantee. <laughs> there's no guarantee that your ass will wake up from a chokehold. Yeah, dude, there really isn't. I mean, but the <laughs> fact is you. You're getting like like fucking pro athletes, dude. You're getting paid cash money to fucking choke somebody out, dude. Choke that motherfucker out. I don't give a shit if he taps. You don't you don't quit fucking choking him until the goddamn ref gets over there. Hell yeah, because you know what? I I'm not a ultimate fighting champion. And if I was in the ring you don't with Con- say. if if I was in the ring with, with Conor McGregor, I'd be scared as fuck. And if I got a choke hold on him, I'd kill him. Because yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, you, you ain't getting the fuck back up. By, that off chance, that off chance that by they don't chance, stop the fight. Slipped on a banana peel, there's oil in the fucking ring. I don't know what the fuck happened, but by the chance that I can start choking that motherfucker out, I'm killing him. Fuck that. Yeah. Hey, you could you could write that down off this fucking podcast, man. I don't care if you're listening, NSA. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> Oh, dude. The other the other thing that's killed me about this week, have you been following this Supreme Court shit? Okay, the Supreme Court shit. All right. The Brett, the Brett Kavanaugh. No, hold on, hold on. I, I'm going somewhere with this. So yeah, hey, well, yeah, that's me, why yeah. you wanted the camera on, because you see me just look away like, yeah, this shit. This fucking yeah. shit. <laughs> no, no, no. One shit. of the dudes one of the dudes that won one of the fights last night was like, yeah, shout out to my homie Brett Kavanaugh. And the entire crowd almost whooped his ass. That's, you know, let, let me tell you a little bit for, about my my friend Brett Kavanaugh. And I, <laughs> my home, my compadre. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a couple things. Uh, my my reaction to the whole situation. I got a couple different points on it. Number one, and the biggest one, biggest sticking point. How do motherfuckers just show up out the woodwork and say you did some shit? Like fuck, don't. like fucking for real. You just like you know what I'm saying. Like 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 you're going for a job, and somebody said, "Hey, you know what? He I, he's he's driven under the legal limit. <laughs> I mean, he's driven over. He's driven a car <laughs> over the legal limit many times. You know, I mean, somebody right. could just come out and say some shit like that about you. But nah, when it comes in this Me Too era, when it comes to yeah, he raped me in 1982. Like you know what? Would I mean he? He could have already served a sentence by now. I mean, right. goddamn. <laughs> really? No, I think, I think he, he was like 17. He probably could have got the shit fucking expunged from his record. I mean, honest to God, truth. I mean, really, for her to come out and be like, yeah, well, women, and I was talking to somebody, she's like, women shouldn't be afraid to tell. Well, well, motherfucker, a crime was fucking committed towards you and you don't want to say shit? Then, hey, how you going to come out later? Number Dude. two, he's Dude, did you a, listen to this guy his fucking testimony? And number two, he's a fucking idiot. I mean, uh, 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 above and beyond. Uh, uh, that is my second point. That you know what, <laughs> you know what, me and him couldn't have been in on that fucking rape because he'd have snitched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, here's, here's my. Uh, he, uh, here's he, my he, if, this, if this whole thing was a Bach, right? Like. Say say this lady's not even real. They pulled her off the street. She's a fucking wannabe actress. Oh, he knows just that. To, uh, just to see what this fucking guy would do under pressure. This motherfucker failed miserably. The, the way he answered his questions, the way he carried himself, the whole thing. Like, even if this entire situation is completely untrue, you get to see who this guy really is. And he's a piece of shit. I don't want him. He's a piece of shit. I don't want him. I'm just going to say that. I do not want him judging a pie eating contest. I don't. (laughs) (laughs) But, but, let me, no, let me tell you. If you're going to sit here and say, oh, we should believe all women. Oh, well, what about the fucking 20 some odd women that Bill Clinton allegedly raped that nobody's talking about? Alyssa Milano brought that up. 
Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's where I heard it. I'm like, dude, really? Like, we should believe all fucking women without due process. And then all these people making T-shirts and wearing banners that say, just remember, it's it's a mother and a daughter and a, and a friend. Like, bitch, just remember, it could be your dad or your brother or your son that gets accused of that shit. You don't want due process? That's. I mean, that was my biggest issue. There was no due process to the whole thing. You know, I, I live in a country where I, I was told that I am innocent until proven guilty and some motherfucker just can't run up at one of the biggest moments of my life and just say some shit that is unfounded. You know what I'm saying? If if there was proof, like I say, you know what? The motherfucker caught a case on it. Even if it got expunged, if he caught a case on it, all right, that's a that's a fucking problem. But, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you hear a liberal lady go, oh, well, women are afraid. You know what? A woman is not afraid to throw your ass under the bus when it is fucking time. When it is fucking, no when it is fucking time. <laughs> the only thing women are afraid to tell about is rape. But other than that, a woman will throw you under the bus in a hot goddamn minute. That is, That must be the only thing they want to stay quiet about. Because yeah, a woman catches you fucking up, oh, she's going to fucking shit on you. She's going to tell on you. Man. Man, you, you you fucking move a curling iron and you can have five zero at the fucking house. <laughs> and number well, and, and, th- my third point, the the questions they were asking him were fucking stupid. Have you ever blacked out? How much beer do you drink? Blah blah blah. What the fuck does this have to do with anything? Are you talking? Are we talking about when I was in <laughs> when I was in high school? Did I ever black out? I mean, I didn't drink back then, but I'm just saying, like, you know, if you were, if for buddies I grew up with, yeah, all of them. Yeah, there was all sorts of yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> it's drugs. You're experimenting. You're young. You don't fucking know. Like, that's, those dudes black out, blacked out then, so they don't black out now. <laughs> right? No shit. And I, I got to say, just from, like, a shallow materialistic standpoint, hopefully she was way hotter when she was 17. Man, because they could not, they could not have picked like the worst, the worst, <laughs> the worst <laughs> fucking puppies <laughs> from trailer park looking ass kids in the entire life. Yeah, I, yeah, because I, I mean, before uh, I don't know, he, he was young. He was. I'm sure she looked different. She, I'm sure she looked. I'm sure she looked different. She probably looks that way from the trauma from when she was 17, right? That's what they'll say. You know, another thing I got a problem with, and I'm glad nobody listens to this goddamn show because we get hate mail, is <laughs> she's at a better station in life than I am. How do I feel sorry for her? Dude, that's that's it. That's right, fucking it right there. <laughs> like, I mean, really? She went on? I mean, I didn't get raped. I didn't finish college. <laughs> I mean, shit. <laughs> If that's what fucking motivates you to go get it, fuck. I mean, sometimes yeah, it, send some, one over. Sometimes it takes a fucking traumatizing moment. I mean, look at the Incredible Hulk. Like hella bad shit got happened to him before he actually <laughs> kick it into gear. <laughs> Maybe that was just your fault. Okay. <laughs> he said, "Look at the Incredible Hulk." <laughs> Oh man, dude! No, speaking of that, have you seen those fucking fan posters where uh, it's like about you've obviously seen Infinity War and it's been out long enough. I see Infinity somebody, War. Yeah. And remember, yeah, I fell somebody asleep made in it. A, right? Somebody made a fucking fan poster where it's like Captain America talking to Bruce Banner, and he's like, "Oh, so what's up with the Hulk?" He's like, uh, "I don't know, man." In the next sit, in the next frame, it says, "Yeah, well, I slept with Natasha," and all of a sudden, he's just like, "Ah!" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just fucking hilarious. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I actually run, um, was checking out a podcast about murder because I think the Hulk would fucking murder Captain America because he doesn't oh, have a special heartbeat. suit. Oh, I heard Captain. Uh, by the way, I heard Captain America quit anyway. <laughs> he didn't quit. He's just getting too old. Chris Evans was just like, yeah, I'm done. He was like, yeah, I'm done doing this. I mean, shit, ain't that enough movies? Fuck. I, mean, I know. Dude, get- Iron Man, Iron Man's gone, what, 12 years? Wolverine went 17? Like, Chris Evans has only done seven. Fuck that guy. Hey, you gotta be really 
fucking happy that every time you turn on TNT, you know a check is coming to your mailbox. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain America coming up on FX. Hell yeah, there's a check coming over here. Uh, working, yeah, but no, I, I was, uh, I, I was, uh, I spent some time on the road because I mean, yesterday I was back and forth. I, I went to Corvallis and back. I had a double gig day. Ooh. Yeah, I, I was listening to a podcast, uh, Small Town Murder. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I didn't want to. I said something to you about it, but I was like, I didn't, because I knew you had brought it up because you're on the road a lot. We don't talk about yeah, yeah. podcasts on here. Now, if you have not listened to Serial, then you really shouldn't be fucking with podcasts at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> Serial's uh, dope. For, for, first season, the bird, bird, the bird dog thing in the second season kind of lost me. Way too many episodes. Anyway, <laughs> so the small town murder thing, like these people, they take a, a murder that happens in a small town and they totally break down the environment of what was going on. They tell you what the average temperature was, the population, and everything and you said the issue you had with the show was the fact that you just couldn't get into it and i have to come yeah, back and reply yeah. after listening to two episodes if i wasn't on the road family if i wasn't on the road and didn't have shit else to do i might not have got into it either but it's one thing there's all sorts of shows about pot, about murders and stuff like that but it's a whole other thing when you got two comedians just cracking the fuck up on the details of a murder and how it happened. Because there was this one I listened to where, yeah, they found the drifter that killed the lady, supposedly, and they found him with a, a half pound of cocaine. And they're like, well, how does a drifter get a half pound of fucking cocaine? Like, you got to know somebody <laughs> to get a half pound of cocaine. They're like, we're fucking comedians. Like, yo, you want to you wanna get a little to sniff on for the night? I can find you that right now. But a fucking half pound of cocaine, you got to meet a couple fucking guys. <laughs> you got to know somebody. I mean, they now, just... Well, they, okay, so here here was my issue. I got I to gotta cut you off. So here's here's the issue with that. Okay. You're telling you're telling me about, you know, this small town environment and murder. The, the thing I had the problem with the most about getting into it was not the jokes. They were fucking hilarious dudes, but they seem to fuck up like their timelines because they're throwing in jokes and you're trying to follow the story. And then they're telling you some funny shit. So I really couldn't pay attention to it unless I listened to the episode like two or three times. I can get you on that. Yeah, I definitely can get you on that. I mean, I, like I said, the, the downside to me was, Especially on the second episode I listened to, because like the first, you know, the first episode was it was pretty butter, but the second one I listened to was actually a newer one, and it was just a, it was a little the build up was a little dry. It was just like yeah, all right. I mean, because I, I mean maybe I mean hey, we don't always have our best show. Yeah, shout out to Fortress Proper Management for bringing that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, we whoa, don't. Whoa, whoa, what what happened there? Oh, dude, I get I, the, the sponsors get the sponsors get feedback. And and how come and, I don't hear this and, until we're live on the show? And because some shows some shows are better than others. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. most of the time it's like, yeah, that was great. But sometimes it'd be like, man, <laughs> man, man like, you gotta get it and, and I'll look back and I'm like, yeah, I guess I can see that. Or I'll be like, nah, motherfuckers, you just didn't get it. You didn't see my vision, <laughs> even though. <laughs> let me tell you something about if you're if you're an artist aspiring to do anything in life. And you say they just didn't get my vision. That's because your vision sucks. I'm mean, be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> like if you like either that you, or you didn't fucking do a proper PowerPoint presentation. You, bitch. you know, if you're saying I have this great thing, but nobody can see it, it's because you're you're not you're not you're not selling it right. You're not expressing it right. Oh, I'm an awesome painter, but everybody thinks my paintings suck. Then your paintings really fucking suck. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, what's awesome to you? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you like, I mean, some people like pickles on ice cream. Not all. That's not a work hard to me. You should step up your game, you know, inflect. But yeah, I don't know. Dude, I think- I'm, with, I'm with you on that because I met, I actually met a couple artists down here in uh, Colorado Springs and uh, this last couple weeks, a couple artists and a couple comedians. And we were just hanging out and, you know, shooting the shit, drinking, having a good time. And when you have a fucking comedian say, oh, dude, you're funny as fuck, man. Why don't you ever get on stage? That's a good feeling. 
Yeah, but good. most people, yeah, cause most you people, because you don't write and you don't got the balls. Go ahead. <laughs> most people are going to go, well, yeah, I should just go jump on stage. No, that's exactly it. You have to have the self-awareness to sit down, write some shit, work it out, and then go on stage. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, well, this is my vision. People are going to be like, uh, uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Same thing when it comes to DJing, because I, I worked with a rookie last night, and that motherfucker, you know, he really, until, <laughs> in, in, I will tell you the magnitude of playing next to me, you don't ever want to play next to me, I don't care how good you are, how new you are, or whatever, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to own my shit, and oh yeah, you want to- Shots wanna, fired. Uh, yeah, hey, Shots hey, fired. Hey, you want to, hey man, I didn't, I didn't shut down some, I didn't, sh- I didn't ran with and shut down some greats. You just tell me what the terrain is like. No, no, don't let me pick the terrain because I'm shitty at that. Nah, if you just let me play loose, I'll, I'll sound like shit. But you go on for an hour and I got to come after you? Oh, man, I'm going to mop up the fucking floor. I'm going to think of every song you didn't play, you fucking <laughs> dummy. So, uh, I mean, you know. Said, I'm going to think of everything you didn't play, motherfucker. That's the way you're supposed to do it, right? I mean, nah, but I, I mean, shout out to my man, Colin. He's trying. He's getting in the game. But last night, we, we went hour for hour. And, you know, I mean, he, I think that was the first time in his short DJ career that he was like oh like this is hard yeah this is hard <laughs> oh, you made him rethink his whole life didn't you You make it look easy yeah i make it look easy but if you're standing next to me hey man you know what i'm saying family don't don't be off of the bermuda triangle if if you ain't playing the right <laughs> shit you gotta fucking write the ship i was like yo homeboy you should go home and look at your playlist and, th- and look at what songs fucking sucked for you Dude, I mean, there was one. I walk out. As soon as I walk out, I walk out the first time. I got a great dance floor going. Hey, shout out, Colin, if you're listening. But I'm a clown right here. I had a great dance floor going. I think I was coming out like some Mary J. Blige. It was something. It was something like just kind of kicking. Man, I go outside. I'm taking the first puff of my cigarette. The beat hits, and he clears my floor, man. You'd think, I was like, did you have gas? I mean, what the fuck happened? Like, motherfuckers <laughs> ran off. Like, I mean, it was, I mean, no disrespect, but it was like there was a fucking mass shooting going on. Motherfuckers was running off that dance floor. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> like we are guy. fucking gone. Like a mass shooting. Going on. <laughs> I was like, wow. I said, you know, I'm just gonna kick back. Maybe he can recover. He couldn't quite recover. And I, and I, we what's, were supposed what's to go our fr- what? What is his DJ name? DJ Freezem. DJ Freezem. If you want to rebuke these allegations against you. Like my man Brett Kavanaugh over here, you can hit us up, 503-776-0167. That is the hype line. And uh, tell me, hey, tell hey, us what no, really no, Actually, you know, for me to make allegations, I have more credibility than that bitch because I am an expert on DJing. <laughs> Hopefully you're not an expert on being raped, but I, I am an expert <laughs> on DJing. So I know what I'm talking about. And I was not drunk either. Neither of us were drunk. No, <laughs> we were both sober when I went in and just had to smash a hundred, dude. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to smash, and grab your loot, and get the fuck out, huh? Yeah, I said I grabbed my loot and got the fuck out, man. No, and then I uh, got to, went to Muchos Gracias and had a taco salad. Uh, that reminds me, I gotta take the trash oh, out. Oh, wow, you're eating, you're eating healthy and shit. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Man, I got <laughs> I got to take the I got to remember to take the trash out before I go to work because you cannot leave Muchos Gracias in your trash, especially if it got some yeah. sour cream on it. Not at all, sir. No, Not no, I I don't know. Hey, Muchos Gracias, do you guys get the the almost expired sour cream? Cuz it seems like by the morning <laughs> It seems like you know, by the morning that shit is hella suspect. Like you go to heat, Dude. You, you go to heat that shit up, and you're like, "Hold on, this this sour cream looks suspect." But I am Dude, that hu- shit suspect when you put it in your body, <laughs> man. But I I am hungover, so I guess yeah, I'll just make right. it work. <laughs> Hold up. So, Wait. so before we get out of here, I got one challenge to present to you, and uh, you tell me what it is. We'll make it happen, and we'll come back next week and tell everybody if it was fucking shitty or if it lives up to the hype. What movie are we going to see this week in theaters? Ready, go. Uh, you should have. Uh, this is why you're supposed to put together a fucking prep sheet. Yeah. I have a prep sheet, but it's on my end, and I just yeah, now yeah, thought yeah, of this. I mean, it's you're, not a, you're, you're, I mean, 
I think you're a great friend, but I think you're a shitty producer. <laughs> <laughs> what movie do you want to see? The Predator. Uh, I'm looking. There's, there's a whole. No, bunch I don't want to see out. the goddamn Predator. What the fuck do I look like? Oh, like yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to see the Predator, and I'm going to see Night School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what I've been you know I, I go to the movies and you know like when there's a shitty preview for something like prep school that just keeps the fuck coming on yeah like, I, I, every time I go to the fucking movies this shit I, I, you know I know it's coming I mean Kevin Hart's gonna be fucking Kevin Hart um I don't know what comes out this week I don't know. It can come out. It could have come out like the past month, past few months. Doesn't matter. I mean, really, it doesn't look like there's much of shit out. So maybe I'll just go see Venom. Venom, it is. All right. I, you know, I think I think Venom. motherfuckers go see superhero movies just because there's just not. I mean, I look at the I look at the field. There's not much. Oh, oh. They're, they're they're trying to steady keep a fucking superhero movie coming out every three months, bro. Like a new iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, in it. Anna Kendrick's in that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's 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 a good reason to watch. <laughs> that, that's reason enough, baby. I mean, yeah. I mean, that is that is the most bangable skinny broad I've ever seen. Hell yeah. I, oh, and just so you know, uh, Johnny C will be coming to town here in the near future, so we're going to try and link up with him, get him live on the show so you two can actually officially meet. C4 and, uh, Johnny, John, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Johnny C can uh, ramble on and never stop talking to your face instead on the phone. You know, next time Johnny C comes on the show, I think um, we'll just give him his own episode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Well, he yeah. wouldn't even know. He wouldn't even know, bro. No, we, we would just, we, I mean, we just let him start talking in the middle of an episode, cut that out, <laughs> and then just go ahead and trim our episode down to a half hour. Then you get an extra 45 minutes. You know, you I'm know, it's funny. I, C. I was listening to, uh, you know, Michael Rappaport is. Yeah. So he has a paywall. Like he's like, yo, I did this dope shit on the last episode. And I noticed his episode skipped a number on my podcast thing. He's like, yeah, for my premium subscribers. <laughs> I was like, who the fuck would pay to listen to fucking Michael Rappaport? No shit. Right? Now I can see what's his name. Uh, like not Adam Carolla. What's the other? Like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. He actually, he guys, he does actually does some shit. Not a fan, but you know, I respect his game. But Michael Rappaport, nah. I, I mean, you know what? I live in Vancouver, Washington. I know enough wiggers. I'm cool. <laughs> Hold up. <Wait. laughs> right, On that note, oh, so you already know. So it's about that time to go. This is the hype podcast. Uh, I am DJ Oso oh Fresh. And I'm the host with no name, and we're kicking it with you every single Sunday right here on The Hype. And don't forget, check out Fortress Property Management. It's time to go. One more time. Fortress Property, M- Fortress Property MG. Time to don't go. interrupt me, motherfucker. Hit him up. 503 75 All your property management needs. And don't forget to check out all the Hype Podcast episodes on iTunes. Stitcher, all the podcasts, apps, whatever the fuck they are. Rate us, stars. Want to hear some stuff on the show? Please hit us up 503 776 0167. Tell us what you're thinking and we'll talk about. This is the Hype Podcast. It's time to go. This is the podcast after the podcast, and yeah, um, there's a few things we didn't do this episode. It wasn't a lot of sound effects. <laughs> but there was a fair share of laughing um, And uh, my reference to the, the Incredible Hulk getting mad That really, that, that cracked me up um, Other than that, um, uh, we didn't even do an intro for the show So we'll go out with, we'll go out with a bang Usually we say this is the Hype Podcast And now, now now you know what this is uncomfortable because I'm just talking and you're just lingering around my house like the party's over take your vodka home get the fuck out of here man you're half drink vodka you know if we, if we drink half of it you're supposed to leave it here this is DJ also fresh I'm out you should thank the most high and you should buy her a thank you card fuck it we'll do it live <laughs>